Good morning and welcome in. Before we get into this morning's update, I'd like to go over what's transpiring right now. Right now, XRP is up 3.95%. We're still over the 65 cent level. This is very, very, very important. And for anybody who was in either one of the two lives yesterday, as I did do two lives, one was after about midnight last night. The other one was at the normal time around 6, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that will be when we do our next live this evening as well. So this morning, we're going to take a look at the fact that we're sitting up in a range where do we have some kind of pullback that needs to happen. Last night, we had a mild pullback to about the 63 plus cent area. And we're able to hold it very nicely and start pushing back up. So we're going to take a very deep look at the technical analysis to see exactly the levels that we're going to need to hold to continue to push up and what the most likely areas of consolidation can be that can extend us outward and upward. And then we'll take a look at some measures. If we do start pushing up or down, that would be the areas of extreme opportunity or, you know, areas where if it falls through, it could lead to, you know, a bigger downturn. So we'll make sure to get on top of all that. We will also make sure to look at XLM to see where it's at in its uh, process. Up about 2.94% right now to the 10.58 or 10.548. And then we'll also take a look at DGB at some point during this update as it's at the 735 level, 00735. It's up 1.1%. Last night it was about down about three quarters percent, 1% when we were on. So it's good to see at least a little minor turnaround, but nothing major. And then we will definitely, and I mean definitely, we're gonna look at the sentiment, which we can do that very quickly because it's very quick to read. But we'll read what sentiment says about different type of holders, 10,000 or more with XRP. And then uh, holders that, let's just say are whales as well. So it tells us about the increase in addresses. And then we have to read this because I like to speculate. Is this a final opportunity to accumulate XRP in the sense as XRP prepares for next move to $1? So these will be very nice. Uh, the one article is a little bit longer. The other one's just sentiment data, which is basically just the screen you've seen in front of you. So I'll read over that as well. So please make sure to hit that like button so YouTube recommends this update. By you hitting that like button, it'll allow YouTube to recommend my content, which means on the YouTube news feed it pops up. So whether you've seen my content or not, you'll be able to make an educated and informed decision whether or not you'd like to click on it or if you'd like to keep scrolling past. But if you don't see it at all, out of sight, out of mind, or you might have never heard of me. So make sure to hit that like button. I'll catch you on the other side of the intro. Good morning, 9.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. So as we can see, it's early morning. I always talk about when I get here in the morning, so good morning, 9.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I think I just did this on this Wednesday, July 31st, 2024. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. So my brain is just waking up, so if I did that twice, I apologize. Um, so XRP, as we often see in the mornings, right around 9.30, 10 o'clock on the Eastern Standard Time, 6.30, 7 o'clock a.m. on the Pacific Standard Time, we often see the price correct a little bit. We'll have the overnight volatility, and then we'll see it in the morning, especially... In the early hours, the early AM, if there is going to be price consolidation, this is typically where you can get your best buy-in price. However, we still need to see if we can maintain the 64.5 cents approximately. This is a breakout attempt right now. We're attempting to break out of the downtrending resistance, which let me pull this out. This is uh, the cup and handle uh, resistance. And if we could back test the cup and handle resistance at 64 and a half cents, oh, this would be huge. This would be huge. I don't know what happened. I must have deleted that price uh, label on accident, but I know everybody just seen it. But it would be huge. If we could back to 
0.4 cents roughly. Now that's a little too low. Um, it's like 64. If we can back test 64.5 cents and hold this, it would invalidate the possibility that we have to go lower. And this could be where we slingshot. It absolutely could be right here, 645. We need to bounce off of this. Otherwise, if we lose the 645, let me show you this pulled out once again so you can understand. We're in the rising channel right now. We are also in a cup and handle, a much broader one. But the rising channel started after the cup started forming. So you can go all the way back and you can see it on the down, adopt trending resistance. If you go back a little bit farther, it's still valid. But I like it set up just like this. I think it gives us a certain level of opportunity. But we also get to see what's going on with the charting in a real-time uh, performance. So right now, if we broke above 64.50, which we're above, we're trying to hold the back test. If we can, our technical target is up near 84.9 cents. Now, it's not just like a stopgap measure. You can't just come up to 84.5. You've got that resistance right around 70 cents. There's two small resistance, 68.2 and 70.3. But I'm going to get rid of the 68.3. Because we're worried about the top point. We're worried about that move up. Let me get rid of it. Yeah, let me get rid of this. Just. No, we can't get rid of that. That's that uptrending support. So we're going to want to make sure that we can hold this in this area as well. So that's 647. I am going to get rid of this though. Because we do have the underneath. And I honestly think. I know that's 647. But it's like I was talking last night. That 644 seems more. Or 645 seems more appropriate. That's the underneath support. And then if we come underneath that, well, yeah, then we might have to worry about this chart. And uh, if we come below 64.5, it's pretty obvious. That's 62.27. So 62.27. Let me get another label out here. It's much easier to have it in real time. We have price labels out here because then we can see it up and down, left and right. Whoops, I hit the wrong button. Darn it. Now I've got to do this. So finicky. So finicky. But at least when you know what you're doing in real time, it makes it a little bit easier. Um, oh, yeah. We talked about this last night, but B2 gold right now up at three bucks. Gold's up to 2,423. For anybody who's in precious models, the gold, uh, silver, you're very happy right now. Right now, we're looking to hold on B2, or uh, not B2. Uh, B2 gold, we're looking to hold. I was going to say, that don't look like B2 gold. We're trying to bounce off of our hold right now on B2 gold. We came all the way down to $2.85. Did it absolutely perfectly. Now, if this forms this bullish Gartley, our next technical target is $3.35. Remember, we had bought back in initially at $2.35. We did a little bit of swing trading, then got in ultimately at $2.53. Wrote at the 315, sold out, and then bought it back at $2.86 is what I bought it back at. It hit 285. So I know very much so what's going on with the B2 gold momentum. In fact, I try to find opportunities where I can expand my bag sometimes. As most of you know, I had to sell some out for taxes. The rally happened. And once the rally ended after I paid the taxes, rally conceded or concluded after, I sold out wholesale and bought back at 286. Now, I don't care about my average saying 253 or 286. I'd rather save the 30 cents per share and then was able to buy back that many more. So instead of whatever I sold out at 315, I was able to buy X amount more when I bought it back at $2.86. Now this W reversal is starting to happen. It just seemed like a moment of opportunity after a long-standing consolidation. We broke out and needed to back test. Now I'm looking for an opportunity for B2 Gold to work its way up here. And I don't look to sell B2 Gold. It's just if there's an opportune moment and because I had to pay my taxes, my property tax for the summer, you know, I did a, an educated and informed opportunity when I seen a moment, took advantage of it, paid the taxes and rebought back in, added the funds back because I had earned money and uh, was able to buy back about 2,450 shares at $2.86. So we're already off to the races already. So 302 now. So I hope everybody's paying attention with precious metals. I really believe it's the easiest sector to make money in right now. The gold and silver accumulating the physical metals. We were doing that going back to 21, especially in 22, 23 when the price dropped down to almost 1600 for gold and just around 15, 16 bucks for silver was the most opportune moment. So I hope everybody's still paying attention to that. We've looked at a lot of XRP. 
We've looked at B2 gold. We've seen the price of gold, the precious metal. Silver right now has eked up to 28.85. Gold silver ratio still at a beautiful spot for silver at over 83.4 to 1 or 83.9 roughly. Uh, XLM right now up 2.65% to 10.51 cents. It's come down a little bit from last night. It was right around the 10.9 level and we talked about the consolidation where it's either going to be a hold at around the 10.39, which it could come for a double tap here. Wouldn't be surprised because we technically fell down, pushed up. Now we need to back test and prove that we can hold above. And right now for XLM, let's put the label on because I do think it's a very good way to look at this and then if you're looking at this in real time you don't have to wait for me to say something you can be like oh you know what that support tom's talking about is right down there at 1039 for xlm so we've got to hit that if it falls through could be a big problem but as we can see for xlm we were basically on this falling channel and i didn't put the falling channel on the bottom because you could look at it as two different type of patterns you could say we have a consolidation with the stationary support or you can use the old pink line that comes from the prior uh, consolidation before. And you could absolutely use that as a support structure. But as you can see, the pattern broke up. So that support structure is beautiful because we're on top of it. And you can see this W that's trying to form here. I can see it. Um, whether it plays out true or not is anybody's guess. Came up, down, back around. If this pulls out now, it's a big W. And now what you're looking for is bam, bam, up. Whoops. You got this, and then you come up, you're looking for the back test, and then out. So that's what we're looking at right now for XLM, so pay very close attention right now. We're looking for the back test, and then push out. So watch that, DGB, up about 1.38%. It's up a little bit from last night. It was at about the 7.24 level last night. We talked about what looks like an expanding wedge or a broadening wedge, and right now the ground support that we need to hold is right around 7.18 beautiful looks like reversal candle in the four hourly after a come down but we don't know if this is another reversal off of reversal these are the pain in the ass candles so the daily time frame a little bearish could pull up into a hammer candle though if this pulls up to like 740 area before the uh the day ends in 10 hours and 15 minutes which we absolutely have a chance to come up to 740 it's already at 737 or 735 this is turning into a bit of a hammer candle if it keeps going Otherwise, it could just be a bearish continuation in the daily time frame. So we'll watch that very closely. One thing of opportunity with DGB, which is why I'm in, to me, even in the daily, you can see an inverse head and shoulders. Now, could it come down and double bottom? You're absolutely right it could. You're absolutely right it could. And in fact, we're waiting to see if that happens. And that would be shown if it comes below the 718. Hasn't as of yet. We've held that support. So I think there's a big inverse head and shoulders playing off and um ultimately we'll come up to that 797 to 800 level the 800 but ultimately this has a target of 00921 if it plays true so pay very close attention when it comes to the other cryptos because it's not just xrp and it's not just going to be xrp that consolidates after the push up and if you're looking to trade xrp some of the cryptos you see me talking about today or just some of the ones maybe i've even mentioned look in the video description below and or pinned comments there's BitUnix and our Hotcoin. BitUnix, if you're a leverage trader, I would suggest going there because they have the lowest spot in leverage trading fees, period, in the USA. Worldwide, it's hard for me to comment because I only live in the USA, but it's available USA and worldwide. Um, they have many different cryptos, including XRP. And then you also have Hotcoin, which has the XRP Bitcoin pairing. They have things that might not be on BitUnix as far as like if you look at Casper, IOTA, IOTAX, and some of the other ecosystems. But their fees are slightly higher when it comes to leverage trading. So I suggest uh, um, BitUnix for leverage. But you can go on either exchange because there's obviously going to be more on Hotcoin that aren't offered on BitUnix. And you don't need a VPN or a KYC with either exchange, whether you're in the USA or worldwide. And KYC only comes into play if you send or receive from a bank account, which is exactly how you want it. If you want to show me personal support, consider showing me support. I come on so often on 24-7. Um, no paid advertisements or anything like that, so you can have a free viewing experience. So consider sending one YouTube Super Chat per month as we're on the very last day of the month. So consider showing that support, pay it forward, and show the appreciation by Super Chat or by joining Tom's Army at the end of the month or the start of the month tomorrow. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. If you are watching, make sure to hit that like button before you leave. Subscribe and join the over 22,400 subscribers and share the content so we can help expand our viewing audience. So this is what Santiment had to say. 
The amounts of wallets holding at least 10,000 XRP has skyrocketed in the past five weeks. 279.4 thousand such shark and whale addresses exist on the ledger, returning to a six month high. The correlation between these wallets and XRP's market value has been undeniable through 2024. So XRP ledger has been growing in sharks and whales and its price has gained on Bitcoin in the process. XRP ledger, XRP number of 10,000 plus coin wallets for Sandbase Pro. So you have 2,389 more 10,000 plus coin wallets on XRP ledger in just five weeks. So almost 2,400 people have bought 10,000 plus tokens in the last five weeks, adding to the amount we used to have. And it says the amounts of wallets at least 10,000 XRP has skyrocketed in the past five weeks, 279.4K. Such shark and whale addresses exist on the ledger. Returning to a six month high, the correlation between these wallets and XRP's market value has been undeniable through 2024. So just understand that the amount of wallets holding 10,000 or more has increased by over 274,000 wallets, which is interesting. And then final opportunity to accumulate XRP in cents as XRP prepares for next move to a dollar. So I'll release this update after I get done reading this. If you are watching right now, have a blessed morning. I will see everybody this afternoon. I'm gonna to go to the gym and do a workout after this. And I appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. You make this what it is. A high momentum rally in XRP breaks above crucial resistance and makes massive green candles to fuel the uptrend to $1. With the golden cross over sirening a bullish trend reversal, here's the last potential chance to buy XRP in cents under 65 cents. Amid the broader market pullback, most of the altcoins with large market caps are witnessing a huge supply coming. However, XRP swims against the bearish wave to rank amongst the top performers in the last 24 hours. With the breakout run extending the V-shaped reversal rally, XRP will cross above the 52-week high to reclaim the $1 psychological level. And I like to read stuff that counters my own technical analysis, whether it agrees or disagrees, I like to have different points. So this is a beautiful one for us. So XRP will cross above the 52 week high to reclaim the $1 psychological landmark. Consequently, this analysis provides a closer look to ascertain if this is the last opportunity to buy XRP at under 65 cents. So Golden Cross and XRP hints bull run above 65 cents. Following the consolidation patch under the 65 cent level for a couple of weeks, XRP has regained bullish momentum with an overnight surge of 4.28%, coupled with the 3.10% continuation today. The altcoin trades at 64.7 cents, which we're very close to that level right now. And you can very clearly see that breakout of that descending formation. Um, with the consolidation range breakout, the XRP token challenges the 65 cent mark with 160% surge and 24 hour trading volume. According to the Fibonacci retracement, the 24 hour, or the 2024 correction phase, the altcoin opposes the 78.60% Fibonacci level. Further, the bullish crossover in the stochastic RSI generates a massive spike from the oversold zone. Thus, the massive demand and momentum surge is evident in the technical indicator. Even the bullish influence over the 50 day and 200 day exponential moving averages results in a bullish crossover known as the golden crossover. It marks a trend reversal signal in the XRP daily chart and bolsters bullish confidence. So XRP breakout run on smaller time frames. On a smaller time frame of four hourly, the XRP price trend shows a bullish breakout of a triangle pattern. However, the prior bull run before the volatility contraction makes it a bullish flaw, uh, flag. We talked about this yesterday, the bull flag that can take us to 80 cents or more, or more, or more. The breakout rally increases the chance of an uptrend in the XRP price as the bullish flag is categorized as a trend continuation pattern. Further, the bullish crossover and the moving average convergence, divergence, or MACD and signal line supports the uptrend continuation. Will XRP hit $1? Will I be able to have the first opportunity to back out and cut my hair after 13 months? I haven't cut my hair since the beginning of last July. I promised I would not cut it at a little, until it at least hits $1. Or ultimately, I have the choice to keep it going into all time highs, which may be exactly what I do. So the rising demand for the XRP token during a market pullback speaks volumes about the upcoming bull run. In addition, the multiple breakouts 
and the bullish signals in the daily and smaller time frames support the optimistic viewpoint. According to the Fibonacci levels, in the daily chart, the 65 cent break will weaken the 72 cent resistance, thus chances of a bull run in XRP to the 168 Fibonacci retracement level at 91 cents will increase. Optimistically, a push from the upcoming federal rate cuts in the U.S. and broader market recovery could propel XRP to reclaim the $1 psychological landmark. And today, Jerome Powell speaks at the Fed meeting, and we're going to find out today or tomorrow whether or not they uh, lower rates, keep them the same, or raise rates. I guarantee you they're not raising them. And it's either going to be this time or in September that I guarantee they lower rates. Crypto might go nuts, but commodities and precious metals are going to jump off the foreseeable cliff but it's not going to go right to the ground. It's going to pull a parachute, have a little bit of endurance, and we're going to have a little bit of a guiding, uh, like a jet pack on the back, and we're going to surge in precious metals. So make sure to hit that like button, and if you made it until the end, hashtag be better, do better in the comments.